Hi everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking today about um, that little passage from the Prelude to the Opera Carmen by Georges Bizet, uh, one that is on many auditions, um, the lyrical low passage. So I want to talk a little bit about why it's on the audition. This is, this is something you, you need to always keep in mind. Why is that passage selected as something that's on most auditions? Um, I guess the simple reason is that most people find it difficult to play, to play it well. And uh, I, I'm one of those people. I find this, uh, this quite challenging to do at the level that, I, that I'm hearing it musically. Um, and uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. I'll get into some of those in this, in this session. But the first thing that, uh, that I want to talk about, which comes from the, uh, which is in the intro video that I did, um, is, uh, is about blend. So when you understand that you're enhancing someone else's sound, you're blending your sound into their sound. In this case, you're taking the trumpet sound, combining it with the other trumpet player's sound in unison, and then you're combining your sound into the uh, sound of the cello section in the orchestra. That's a really fun and a cool thing to do. So it's very helpful to listen to how a string player would play this line because trumpet players tend to play it very square. We might do it something like this. So we're, we're doing it very rigid, and it's not. It's a long line, it's slow, obviously, but it needs to have some kind of shape. And so when you listen to the string players do it, you're going to try and emulate what they're doing. So it, it, you have to have an, um, an imagination, a musical imagination about what you're doing with, with the shape and the direction of this line. Now, one thing that helps tremendously with that is if I play through it quickly, and I do this a lot, especially with very slow things, so... And we're going to get into that. For most people, that's a mechanical challenge, a physical challenge on the instrument. It has to be overcome and mastered so that your sound doesn't sound distorted. It sounds like a normal instrument not like a trumpet trying to play a low F. And we'll talk about that in a second. But you see when I play through the passage, it's changing harmony as it goes through. And if you can hear that, that each line, each phrase is leading, is setting up the next harmony. This is always something important to keep in mind, especially in French music. Um, but in all music, harmony usually has a pretty high, high level of function in terms of that sense of direction. You hear tension and resolution, dissonance and going into consonance. Um, many things are happening there. It's just a matter of listening for it. And uh, it'll be really helpful to listen to those cellists uh, play this in order to get a good, good idea. Um, musical character is also very important. So what do I mean by musical character? This is an opera. An opera is, by definition, a drama, a musical theater drama. And what's going on? Well, <laughs> The beginning of the prelude starts with a lot of energy and enthusiasm and, you know, you know the Toriyoda song, is, it's a very youthful sounding. This spot, not so much. That's because you get a foreboding sensation. Something bad is going to happen. And you have to figure out how to convey that character through your sound and all, all, using all the musical ingredients in order to convey that character of the music, which in this case is a little threatening. It's kind of like fate is not going to be possible to overcome fate. It's going to take you in this direction. And there's a darkness to it. Um, it's a little scary, uh, to be honest. And it should have that, that feeling in it. Um, so how do you do that? Well, basically by listening to other people who do it effectively. And then you're trying to taste what they do and learn what the ingredients are. And there are lots of ingredients. Of course, there are physical skills for doing all these things too, but I want to start with two of the, of the basic ingredients. When I work on this passage, I'm working with a tuner. Why? Because it's unison and you have to play it in tune in order to play it musically beautifully. 
That's part of the craftsmanship. But it's not only about pitch, it's about timbre as well. So if I play it with uneven timbre, it will never sound good, even if it's perfectly in tune. So what I want you to do is listen for, find the core of the sound. Some people call it the center of the sound, the sweet spot in the sound. <clears throat> There's a place where the sound kind of blooms and you can hear all the overtones from the high to the low. And when you're playing in the low register as here, it can be a little bit more difficult to do that. Now what you heard me do is I changed the timbre. I used a little like a vibrato to change the timbre of the sound so you could hear what the difference is. And then at the end resolved where I had a lot of brilliance and, and life in the core of the sound. So when you play this, and this works for many, many things uh, in the orchestral literature, when you play this, now I purposely made that sound dull. These are the things you want to listen for. So you're letting some of the high overtones come into the sound. Now, uh, this may sound strange talking about blending with other instruments. If you have control over the timbre, you, you will automatically be able to get this mu musical effect. But you want to start with that core and I would say brilliance in the sound. It's part of the characteristic natural voice of the trumpet. And every instrument has it. Every instrument is looking for, looking for that. So, that's something to listen for. People will work with a tuner, play the pitch correctly, um, and somehow it will sound wrong. And that's because every note can easily be muscled or manipulated, and that changes the timbre. So, that timbre is consistent, then you have a perfectly connected and blended sound with yourself, <clears throat> which is a critical thing, <coughs> excuse me, that you want to have for an audition. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, I'm going to try that once again, and I'm going to change the timbre and hope that you can hear it. Do you hear how I did a wah-wah on every note? <clears throat> this is not a good idea. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny. Wah, 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 wah. But that's a very common thing that you hear. Why? Because people are holding on, physically holding on to the notes. So, so practicing for the physical skill of being able to sustain and move from one note to the next in a beautiful fluid line with no, without disturbing the quality of the timbre, whatever, that, whatever timbre quality you have established. That's a critical physical skill that you want to get. <clears throat> Another one is when you end a phrase or you end a line, you're going to be going from that phrase into the next phrase. Um, <clears throat> let's see, where would be a good, good place to change? See, when you take a breath, de, da, 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 that note needs to be in the right place. <clears throat> da, da, half step. Um, and there you have an octave. <clears throat> Those octaves need to be in tune. Now that's kind of common sense. Anybody that's working on their craft understands these things, but there's physical skill involved in doing it, and you have to practice it until your body comfortably and consistently and easily follows your ear, and you're hearing where those notes go. Now let's spend a moment and talk about <clears throat> the awkwardness for the trumpet player in the middle of this line. I'm playing a B-flat trumpet, as you can see, because that's what we normally do when we play this, and why is that? Well, we have to play a low F. 
and the way I'm doing it, there are many ways to do this, and please uh, consult with your teacher, and, and there are a lot of different ways to do it. You want to find the one that gives, that's the easiest for you and that gives you the best physical uh, result and the best musical result in the sound. So what I do... <laughs> is I preset the third valve slide so I can play A to A flat. I'm playing A flat with third valve. is I should be able to make that shift, leave the slide in exactly the right place, <clears throat> and play it like a normal note. Then when I go to the low F, and it, this totally depends on kind of the combination between the player, the mouthpiece, and the instrument itself. Um, I've had some horns where I just shot out the, the third valve slide only for the low F, and it was perfectly in tune. This horn, not. So I have to do it this way. <laughs> to get that low F to sound good. <clears throat> and so we're always tempted to go back in and kind of manipulate to try and make that note happen. What you want to do, strongly recommend that you practice this until you become physically confident and skilled in it. You're just flowing air continuously. people don't spend much time working on that. They get close to the note and think that it sounds pretty good, but people who care about the quality of their work <clears throat> sitting on the committee will decide whether they want you in the orchestra or not based on the quality of your craftsmanship. They want you to enhance uh, their group, uh, not to detract from it. So it's worthwhile uh, spending the time and the effort on this, but not only that, it's uh, it should be musically satisfying to you to be able to get that like a voice that carries through smoothly without any any bumps or any awkwardness even though physically it is pretty challenging to do this. Um, one more idea and this is critical idea I would say. Um, when we play it by ourselves, when I play it by myself I'm the conductor. So I have to know what my musical intention is. When I play it in the orchestra there is a conductor and his visual input is guiding everybody in terms of how the, the timing that that conductor is feeling and the intensity and the shape of the phrase. We get, all get that from the conductor. Now, when you're playing in an audition, you are the conductor. So your sense of pace and time has to be excellent. And if you've listened to this piece and studied it a little bit, you can hear um, to wait for that timpani to come in. And your timing on that is going to be critical. Now, don't get mechanical with it. <clears throat> think of the timpanist. If you think of the timpanist, you see the mallet? You see that gesture. It's setting up where the beat's going to be. That's what you need to feel. And when you do that, it makes your playing very, very convincing. For me, I think that's the most important aspect in successful orchestral playing, especially for trumpet players, since uh, it's a loud instrument and people can hear us, and so we're going to have a, a, an influence on the other members of the orchestra by what we're sounding like. Everybody's going to be able to hear that. So if your timing is a little bit iffy, um, it can really disturb the feeling in the orchestra. And this is that's something you really need to work on. There are many ways to do it. Uh, I'll probably get into the, the how to go about practicing these things uh, a little bit later on. 
but uh, I hope some of these things give you an idea and uh, of what you should be working on and paying attention to and trying to cultivate in your playing. Uh, have fun with this one. Um, this has been a challenge for me, this, the, this particular one, um, but, uh, and I can't wait until I can play it with the orchestra again. <laughs> so uh, all of you have a great day, and I will see you later on down the road. Bye-bye.